Another episode is here. Another round of important updates. Diaspora voting on the front burner and the suspension of work visas by the Lebanese government to Nigerians living in that country. And as George Floyd is buried, the National Council for Arts and Culture, NCAC, and the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, demands justice. As you can see, this menu is really, really spicy. Join the table for a juicy package. I am Koinsala Adetumbi and you are watching The Diaspora. Stay tuned. As Nigeria moves towards the 2023 general elections, Nigerians in diaspora are asking as to when they would be able to exercise and realize their constitutional rights in their country of origin. We are tired of this waiting game. We are tired of excuses. Diaspora voting is possible. At least 20 African countries have conducted their diaspora voting. So why can't Nigeria do the same, they said. Well, let's listen to Honorable Tolulokwe Akonde Shadipe, Chairperson House of Representatives Committee on Diaspora Affairs and Oversight to NIDCOM, as she ensures them that Nigeria is working on it. Enjoy the conversation. That's where voting is a very delicate matter. Very. Because we have Nigerian children who have been born in diaspora, who have never lived in Nigeria, who know nothing about Nigeria. And they will not have voting rights. So we need to be very careful. So we do not sell out on our nation by giving voting rights to people who know nothing whatsoever about Nigeria but just carry a Nigerian passport. So there's hope for diaspora voting. That's the message from the House Committee on Diaspora. And uh, it, it will be challenging, but it can be done the Nigerian way. Like and it has to be done because there's never yeah. a right time. We have and to I also believe, yes, yes. You know, and just like you said during that summit, it doesn't have to be at the same time. I think that it can even be done in such a way that it is when I, not, not that it has to be done in 2023. You know, there will be things there to show when and where according to INEC. And even vote, you must have lived in your country for a certain yeah, number of years. So that's, those are things that will come into the bill. You must yeah. have been here for a certain yes. number of years. You can't just say, I want to vote without even knowing who you want to vote for. So those are things, that's why, like I said, it's very delicate and it's going to take a lot of work, you know? There are some people, like we said, who, have, who don't even know where Nigeria is. They just want to now come. So those are things that every country that has a diaspora voting bill varies from country to country. So we have to do ours to suit our environment. our environment so we've done that now that's one of the, the amendments, amendments to what was fantastic. earlier presented what we have done now we have taken to cognizance of age at which you even live in nigeria not that you would have lived in nigeria but we've looked at you can't have lived in nigeria when you were between one and five years old because that's not the age of knowledge you have to have lived in nigeria at, an, at the age of knowledge and understanding so we I'm sure we would make more. We, we know you will. <laughs> so, thank you very much, um, uh, Madam Chairperson and Honorable Members of the Diaspora Committee. And um, unfortunately, I think due to COVID 19, not m many of us will be doing a lot of traveling until maybe next year. So, expect a lot of Zooms and um, all that. Diaspora Day is July 25th. We're still going to hold it, but we'll do a virtual Diaspora Day where, of course, you'll be speaking and all that. And so we're, we're, we're planning it, and, and we want to make it a whole day event, have an opening ceremony, have a stream live, and um, get it done. So once more, we thank you for visiting us. We appeal to you to be patient with your commission, and um, take us as a, a growing baby, and um, pamper us, <laughs> be kind to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's hope Nigeria implements this soon. There are about 75,000 Lebanese living in Nigeria, knowing fully well that Nigerians are accommodating and humane. Hence the need for reciprocity by the Lebanese government. However, the reverse is the case. 
as there have been some cases of maltreatment by Nigerian workers living in Lebanon. The Lebanese ambassador to Nigeria, Ambassador Hussein Diab, revealed that the embassy has suspended issuing working visas to Nigeria hoping to work in Lebanon, particularly for domestic work. This was disclosed during a courtesy visit by the chairman CEO Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa. Enjoy. We are talking about uh, lately, um, uh, two weeks ago, we were able to bring back uh, 69 Nigerians, Nigerian citizens uh, back to Nigeria that were stranded in Lebanon. Uh, we cooperated with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the embassy and uh, Nigerian embassy in Lebanon to bring them back uh, safely uh, to Nigeria. The Lebanese community in Nigeria was uh, very uh, uh, generous to finance uh, the return, the return of 50 out of uh, 69 Nigerians uh, and to pay for their quarantine. And they see that they are safe and well uh, taken care of. Uh, the, also, we, uh, at, mm, at the Middle East Airlines, which is the national uh, Lebanese airline, uh, was uh, sponsored their uh, tickets. Uh, and this is how we were able to uh, bring back uh, all 69 uh, uh, Nigerians. Um, now, I have uh, to stress that the Lebanese community has always went out of its way to uh, give back uh, to their second country, Nigeria and to the Nigerians that uh, have uh, uh, adopted them as uh, their own. Uh, and this is uh, one of many palliative uh, measures that uh, they have taken lately. Um, now there is the case of uh, 10 Nigerians among the 79 that we were not able to bring them back. Uh, and the reason was that uh, there are uh, cases against them, uh, pending cases. Uh, so we couldn't clear them because of the short time that we were acting uh, through. We were, we were not able to bring them, uh, to uh, clear them uh, to get on the flight. Uh, uh, we are working on that uh, uh, and uh, daily we to make sure that uh, the court cases are dealt with and that we can clear them in time. Uh, so that they can come back safely to Nigeria. Uh, one of the issues that we have done is uh, that to, uh, to stop all uh, these helpers from uh, getting uh, to Lebanon without the, uh, and being abused by their agencies or uh, by the employers. Uh, we stopped all the work visas for Nigerian helpers. Uh, now what we need to do is the second step is to get an agreement with the Ministry of Labor, Nigerian Ministry of Labor, uh, so that uh, this uh, employing any Nigerian helper would be uh, uh, through a system. So have you been able to sensitize your populace about this development? I have to make um, clear that all these uh, Nigerians that are getting to Lebanon are getting in legally. They are getting on a legal uh, contract, on a legal uh, work visa, and uh, they are monitored by the Security General and the Ministry of Labor. Now, sometimes uh, problems happen at the level of their employers. Uh, I have to stress also that the numbers are very uh, small. We're talking about only 79 uh, issues that we have resolved 69 of them and brought them back, and uh, 10 are left. So we really the, the, we have to take into consideration the size of the problem. It's not. It's not something that is not manageable. And all these are accounted for, and the government is dealing with their cases. And a few issues. Number one is, yes, indeed, some Nigerians were left behind. First is the evacuation of the Nigerians stranded in Lebanon was paid for by the Lebanese embassy. And also the quarantine was paid for by them, so we thank them for that. Now, 10 were left behind, and he has explained that out of those 10, nine had cases of theft. One had a case of murder, and there are processes, it's a judicial process, but he has assured us that whatever the allegations against them, it, they will speed up the process, ensure that they finish the judicial intervention, and then he has also assured us that, that they will return home, and um, we've taken him for his words. And then also, the issue of Nigerians going to Lebanon to work and be maltreated, I'm also glad about the major decision taken by Lebanon, which is 
as well as stop um, visas for workers. Because until you properly have agencies that will be documented with the Ministry of Labor, so that if you are going to work, you know you're going to work properly. So we're talking about managed migration. If you're going to work, you're going to work there properly, legally. Now, as he has explained to us, even those Nigerians that are there got visas to go there. But the visas are issued from Lebanon. So when you get there, you're promised to work as a teacher, then you end up working as a, maybe a domestic staff, you know, and then sometimes violated by your employers. So I'm glad about the intervention of the uh, Lebanese ambassador and also our ambassador in Lebanon. They've done amazing work. So what we have to do now is, with what uh, Lebanon has done now, there has to be a stop to unnecessary work permits. That's the first thing. And then secondly, a proper documentation with the Ministry of Labor in terms of managed migration. And then as for the young girl that we were able to save, who went online, went, who was uh, being advertised for $1,000, the ambassador has told us the, the culprit is actually a resident in Lebanon. However, the girl is still with the mission. In fact, she's gotten another job, but the reality is that she says she doesn't want to come back. And they say, she says she's found another job. And I told her, I spoke to her myself on the phone, that if you get into any trouble, nobody to call. But she says she doesn't want to come back, that she's found another job. Even the SSE or your, uh, where she's from, spoke with her. And um, we just hope that Nigerians going to work in Lebanon will be properly treated, not treated as slaves. And then as the ambassador said, the issue of even the workers' permit needs to be properly looked into. Agents are there collecting money, making money, and not saying to the welfare of these people that are going to work there. So our ambassador in Lebanon has done very well, and we thank the Lebanese ambassador for the steps they've taken. And we hope that we put a stop to all this issue of um, Nigerian girls being treated anyhow in Lebanon. Racism, they say, is the discrimination directed against a person from a different race with the belief that yours is superior. But how are we to forget that we need one another to survive in a world filled with uncertainties? For now, the Africans are at the oppressing end of racism and black lives are being lost, hence the need to speak up. The Nigerians in Diaspora Commission and the National Council for Arts and Culture stand with our kith and kin in America and around the globe in these trying times. We hope that the unfortunate and tragic death of George Floyd will inspire a lasting solution to racism and hate. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't. Wherever you are, as long as you're a black man, you're an African. Come to the continent where you can breathe. Come to the continent where we'll show you love and affection. Come to the continent where we know that it's not a bed of roses. We know that, but you know what? You get the greatest thing of all, which is love. And like I said, that is beginning to happen. In Badagri, we've opened a door of return for every black person. They've been coming. What they do is walk through a symbolic, where they were taken as slaves 400 years ago, they walk through it, it's a very emotional event. Then they walk back where we receive them as kings and queens on the African continent. So every black person, you are a king and queen here. Come back home, invest in the motherland. Like I said, we've given you a spiritual connection, a physical connection, an emotional connection, and an economic connection. Come back home, come to the motherland. Nigeria is the largest in, in, in Africa, and the, the, the greatest number of people were taken away of slaves from Nigeria. And like I said, they're all doing their DNA, finding out where they're coming from. If they come here and they have been coming, we're not saying that you know, everything is perfect, but let's work to bring perfection on the African continent. The world will continue to look on, down on every black man. So as a black person, this is a fight we all must fight. As a black person, we must show that we are black and we are proud. As a black person, we must do things right in such a way that our continent truly becomes the greatest in the world. You can imagine a George Floyd at 46 is silent and silent forever. With very heavy heart this evening, NCAC and Nigerian Diaspora and Commission come together and join other countries of the world to say we have solidarity for George Floyd. It is a wicked world we are living in, but we should realize something. 
Our culture is about love, about respect for human dignity. But that was absent the day George Floyd was kept silent and silent forever. But I want to assure you, with the connection this evening of this great commission and NCAC, it's a new message to the world that enough is enough. We must have a change of heart. Things have to change. George Floyd has paid a price, but that price must be recognized by all blacks all over the world. But African-American brothers were taken from Africa only a few centuries ago, but they have forgotten about the homeland. They think that America is their home. If America is your home, why can't you breathe? If America is your home, tell me, why can't you breathe? If America is your dream, then why is it a nightmare? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Spending millions of dollars buying mansions. You know, a few years ago, 50 Cent bought a mansion that used to be owned by Mike Tyson. He bought it for four million something US dollars. And then many years later, a few years later, he, he, he decided to sell it. Okay, the mansion was listed at 18 million US dollars. They couldn't find a client, so finally the house was sold for two million something. So which means this was a bad investment. But now let me tell you something. Do you know how may, uh, what 50 Cent could have done with four million US dollars in Africa? With four million US dollars, he could have built a city or a suburb. Ha! Huh. Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, hey. listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. Despite the hardships and health risks, millions of frontline workers are still doing their jobs in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. These are worthy of commendations. Join me as we profile some of these heroes. Dr. Olatokumbo Songowawa is a public health expert. He was the first Nigerian to be appointed to a director of public health post in the NHS. He was also appointed a consultant in the year 2000 and made a director of public health for Northeast NHS Teaching Primary Care Trust in 2002. He has held senior board level positions in the NHS, such as clinical director of public health, director of infection prevention and control, and director of public health with Northeast Specialized Commissioning Group. Dr. Songowawa led the establishment of T Valley's public health shared services on the basis of making the most efficient use of limited and scarce specialist public health resources, knowledge, and skills, and enabling directors of public health for the five T Valley's local authorities. One of his achievements included the procurement, commissioning, and contract monitoring of an integrated sexual health and HIV service on behalf of four local authorities in England. Dr. Olatokumbo Songowawa, proudly Nigerian.
The Chairman CEO Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabiri Arewa, felicitates with Dr. Yushao Sadiq, who was recently promoted to a full professor of Islamic studies and African religions with a specialization in Islamic law at the Texas Christian University, Mount Fort, Texas, United States of America, where he has been teaching for 20 years. I congratulate you on this wondrous feat for bringing honor and glory to not just your family, but to Nigeria as a whole. I say to you, Barka Lahu Fi. I have no doubt that your excellence is a shining testimony that Nigerians always excel in whatever they do and your achievement serves as an encouragement to the youth of Nigeria. You have put aside discrimination, religious bigotry and recriminations. You are indeed a true Nigerian. Keep the Nigerian flag flying. <laughs> Aha! Hello! How are you? Alright, now I wait for the diaspora and I get stuck with this money. Not be you ready, but I think I already did Mushi or Makoko. Hold up. Yeah! Ha! Okay! When I see this link, now for now I wait for the diaspora. Where see the doubt whether I found you in Nigeria? Hello, don't think about it. This link it go carry you direct. Go the place where we say it go help you choose which investment you want to do for Nigeria. Any investment, whether na waiting, whether na bank shares, whether na agriculture, whether na real estate, whether na stock exchange, any investment you want to do. Make sure say you click on because anything free happen for that for anytime and it go better. Say if you come to Nigeria, you go get where you go relax and you get investment to fall back to. Hello, make sure say you click on more because you won't say what. Eh? Where that? Hey, okay. See, make I help you click the link. Make to click, make to click oh. waiting. When we say now, I'm be alone, but my school, you go. You know, yeah, when I talk, say now nah, for people waiting for the diaspora. People waiting for the diaspora, what are they called? I know, go, oh, the oh, oh, go, oh, go, oh, go, oh, They are called diasporans, oh, there. Let me talk to my diasporans people. Make sure I say you click this link, oh, yeah, to betterment your life. Because when you both say what? The investment in your country, in Nigeria, is a forever life betterment. Thank you. <laughs> you see there, yeah. If you say you don't get job for filling station, I'll be. You see there, yeah. Go, go, not. Thank you for staying all through the program. It's been worthwhile. And in case you have anything to share with us, please do not hesitate to do so as we expect feedback on our show. Remember, you can reach us on all our social media platforms on Facebook at Nigerians in Diaspora Commission on Twitter at nitcom underscore gov, on our Instagram page at nitcom underscore gov, and on our website at www.nitcom.gov.ng. You can also join us on DSTV at NTN Network on Friday at 10.30 a.m., on NTN International on Tuesday at 6 a.m. and 10.05 p.m., on NTN News 24 on Friday at 2.30 p.m., and on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. You can also join us on WAP TV on Monday at 10 p.m. I remain your host, Coinsola Adetumbi. See you next time.